Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please rise for the procession of Trainee Class 30, the Fire Brigade Pipes and Drums of Greater Baltimore, represented by retired Chief Mark Richards, the Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Services Honor Guard, and the singing of our national anthem by Mr. Eric Mann. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Please remain standing as I call Chief Chaplain Steve Stone to the podium for the invocation of our event.
Good afternoon, friends. Please join me in prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as we gather today in celebration, we offer you our prayer of thanks and ask that you impart your blessings on each of us. The words from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10, tells us that each of you should do whatever and use whatever gifts you have been given by God to serve others as faithful stewards to him and receiving God's grace in its various forms. Your hand at work and the words of St. Peter are evident as seen in the readiness of the members of this class as they now prepare to use their gifts in serving others. While many have labored to prepare them for their chosen profession, we pray their efforts will be met with yet greater enthusiasm and promise by these graduates. Father, this calling takes us away from our families, and they make many sacrifices daily while we serve others. When our work is done and we return home, we ask that you guide us that we may give our families and loved ones the same devotion, love, attention, and time that they deserve. In your name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Well, good afternoon. I guess it still is afternoon. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for the Howard County Department of Fire Rescue Services Trainee Class 30. My name is Brad Tanner. I'm the Director of Community Outreach and Media Affairs, and tonight I will be your Master of Ceremonies. And as the MC, it is my main objective to ensure that this program does not run any longer than we anticipated. Well, tonight this is the celebration of the end of a rigorous six-month training academy but the beginning of the next phase in your careers as Howard County firefighters. Congratulations to Howard County's first responders, newest first responders. I want to take a moment to recognize some of our honorable guests with us this evening. And when I call your name, please stand to be recognized. And if you would so kindly, please hold your applause until the end. Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman, Delegate Terry Hill, Howard County Clerk of the Court Wayne Roby, our Chief Administrative Officer Lonnie Robbins, Howard County's Police Chief Gary Gardner, Local 2000 President Rich Rule, and I believe I saw Ray Petrie, our President of Howard County's Fire Officers Association in the back. He's on call or he's working, so he might have to roll out. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Before we begin, I want to make note that during this ceremony, we ask that you remain in your seats unless called for otherwise. Before this ceremony, I know some families or family members were given numbers 1 through 13 to participate in the ceremonial event. Uh, when that number is called, we will then direct you over to the right side of the staircase. But there will be many moving parts throughout this auditorium, and this will ensure everyone's safety by keeping everybody in their seats. And while we're on the topic of safety, You'll note that there are two exits right here on the stage and two in the rear from which you entered. My folks in the fire marshal's office will like that. Chief Wallace, what do you think? You'll also see that, you'll see that we have some photographers for the event. Uh, all pictures that were taken will be made available for the trainees and their families at the end of the ceremony. We ask that those of you who want pictures during the ceremony, please take them from your seats and to utilize the designated photo area in the lobby after the event. All right, now that we've established our house rules for the evening, let's get on with the show. What do you think? So we'll jump right into our opening remarks, and I'll invite to the stage our county executive, Mr. Alan Kittleman. Brad said he was going to make it go quickly, and then he spent a half hour talking to us. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm brief. Uh, congratulations to the Academy 30 class. Thank you to the powerful 13. Uh, we appreciate your willingness to sacrifice for our residents and for our community. Uh, my brother-in-law is a retired Montgomery County firefighter paramedic, and I know the sacrifice his family has made for the 30 years he served. And so all the family members in the audience, thank you 
for your sacrifice. Thank you for allowing your loved one to come and serve our public, to put themselves in harm's danger, uh, because it's a big deal and it's something that we don't take lightly here in Howard County. You are part of our family. You're part of the greater Howard County family, the public safety family. So thank you very much. Uh, also, I do want to tell you that I acknowledge Rich Rule, I'm glad he's here, the president of the Howard County Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2000. Uh, we have a tremendous working relationship with the Local 2000 here, and I want to continue to make that happen. I think that uh, we have done nothing but try to give you all the resources you need to all the firefighters, but especially for those who are graduating today. Uh, also, uh, be remiss if I didn't say something about my, my friend John Butler. Unfortunately, John Butler has decided to uh, take a position in Fairfax County starting in September. Uh, I congratulate him, but I want to publicly tell everyone uh, he will be missed. Uh, I uh, apologize to the Academy graduates because you won't have the ability to, uh, the opportunity to serve with him too long, but uh, he has been a tremendous leader, a tremendous visionary for Howard County. He has really helped me uh, see the importance of certain uh, measures and certain ways that we can improve our public safety and our fire safety. So I just want to publicly thank him and wish him well and, and tell him thank you. <laughs> With that, Brad has given me the hook. I will uh, head out, but thank you again and congratulations to the class of Academy 30. I don't know if that was the official hook, but you know. <laughs> so I would like to now invite to the stage for his opening remarks, our fire chief, John Butler. Good evening. So uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks to the family for choosing Howard County Fire and Rescue. Thanks to the trainees for choosing us. Notice I said they chose us and we didn't choose them because they, they had a, a, a decision to make as well. Um, I, like the exec said, I had to uh, experience some of that last week, and I know uh, what, what choices mean and, and the impact of them. There's some tough decisions uh, to be made. Uh, you have been referred to as the powerful 13. Uh, I will say there was a powerful 13 before, class 31, and that's class nine. <laughs> Chief Sanchez, Captain Welsh, we, we had this 13-person class thing down, Pat, you know, a while ago. But welcome, and um, we're happy to have you here. We're looking forward and are excited about your future. But when it comes to future, uh, you can't talk about future without talking about the past a little bit. And today is the 49th anniversary of uh, the Lisbon line of duty death that occurred on this day in 1969 when uh, Engine 43 from Lisbon was responding to a three-alarm barn fire in a thunderstorm. They left the roadway and, and two firefighters were thrown out of the vehicle and they died. One died later. Howard County's got a long and proud and prideful uh, uh, history and one that we need to keep uh, uh, preserved and do it safely. I hope, wish you guys a lucky and, and safe career. I'll be around. I'm still your fire chief. I'm not appointed anywhere else. I can't be appointed two places at once. And I'm appointed here until September 1. So don't, don't believe everything you read. Okay, so with that said, I want to go ahead and pass the mic back to B-Rat. We'll just keep it at Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now we're going to move on to the keynote speaker portion of the ceremony, and our keynote speaker this evening is Assistant Chief Matthew Tobia from the Loudoun County, uh, Virginia Fire and Rescue. Chief Tobia is a 30-year student of the fire service, currently serving as the Assistant Chief of Support Services and Volunteer Administration with Loudoun County Fire Rescue. Matt has served as a firefighter, a paramedic, company officer, and chief officer and spent 23 years with the Anne Arundel County Fire Department where he retired at the rank of battalion chief. Chief Tobia is a graduate of the University of Maryland and the Executive Fire Officer Program and holds a certification as a chief fire officer from the Center of Public Safety Excellence. He teaches throughout the United States and is a contributing editor and back page columnist for Fire Rescue Magazine. He has served on the faculty of Pennsylvania State Fire Academy and the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute. 
He is a member of the International Association of Fire Chiefs and a past chairman of its safety, health, and survival section. He actively supports the families of fallen firefighters and is a member of the command team for the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Weekend. Chief Tobia is also a counselor at the Mid-Atlantic Burn Camp for children who are survivors of burn injuries. Chief Tobia resides in Purcellville, Virginia. I might have messed that up, sorry, Chief. With his wife, Janine, two children, Hannah and Doc. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Assistant Chief Matthew Tobia. Well, good evening, and thank you for the honor of being here, County Executive Kittleman, members of the council, and distinguished guests, most importantly, the families of our new graduates. Members of Recruit Class 30, if you are permitted to do so, you may either smile or breathe or relax in any combination that you so desire. Over 27 years ago, I graduated from the Recruit Academy in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, and I remember almost everything about that graduation. I remember the night. I remember exactly who was there uh, as parts of my family. I remember the ceremony itself. But the one thing that I most assuredly could not tell you and do not remember is who was the keynote speaker. So if I am unable to be inspiring, I will at least do my best to be brief. <laughs> to the recruits, there are some rules that I would like to share with you about the fire service that I hope you will take to heart, and I hope you will listen carefully. First and foremost, people, you, are what make the organization. Not policies, procedures, rules, apparatus, stations, dispatch centers. We are not measured in the public by these things. No one calls Chief Butler and says, that is the best looking tower I have ever seen in my life. Or that engine company laid that supply line so straight the NFPA would be proud. Nor does he get phone calls that say, the IV that that crew started was just the nicest IV ever. That is not what we are judged by. We are judged by the service that we provide. We are judged by three very simple things. Three very simple things. First, that we respond promptly. When people call us for service, they are having the very worst day of their lives. And while it may or may not be a life-threatening emergency, it is our responsibility to give it our undivided attention. They are not an interruption to our day. They are the reason that we are here. First, that we respond promptly. Second, that we provide world-class service. Vince Lombardi is credited with saying, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And I think it's important to understand that even as he strove for perfection, he knew that what he was going to get was excellence. That is what our communities demand and are worthy of, competent service. And the last thing that the public wants is they simply want us to be nice. Every time that you respond on a call and you look at a patient, you should be looking at one of your family members. Every time that you respond to a house that is on fire, you should be looking at that house as if it is your home. And think about how you would want your belongings treated when you are called upon to serve others. The reputation of this entire organization rests not on the chief, rests not on the chief officers. The entire reputation of Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Services rests on your shoulders. Because every day, the reputation of the organization is embodied in those who provide service most directly to the citizens who we are sworn to protect. Respond promptly, serve to your highest level of professionalism, and be nice. Second, we are not perfect, and no one ever said that we were. There is always work to be done to improve our house. But it is our house, 
and we should take tremendous pride in getting to be a part of it. This is where your recruit training officers get extraordinarily worried, because they infuse in you tremendous energy about how, tr how unbelievably great the fire service is. And then they have to let you go into the real world of the fire service. And for some of you who have no prior fire service experience, there is the grave danger that your thoughts about what it means to be a firefighter could potentially be, I'll say, influenced by programs and movies like Backdraft or Ladder 49 or Rescue Me or Chicago Fire. For those of us who are old enough to remember, that would be Emergency and the Towering Inferno. <laughs> there is a whole generation of kids who are like, Emergency? What is that? It is important to realize that the real world of the fire service is frankly long periods of just regular duty punctuated by extremely rare instances of incredibly intense activity. Those are the adrenaline-filled incidents that cause our hearts to pump and our chests to swell with pride when we make a difference. But those are few and far between, because in reality, being involved in the fire service is mostly just helping regular people with regular problems on a daily basis. Third, personal discipline, a willingness to be accountable for your actions, and loyalty are the cornerstones of membership in this organization, not to an individual, but to our reputation, which precedes us everywhere we go. When you live your life from this point forward, you should live your life as if you are wearing your uniform 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is critical to guard that reputation with your very life. Fourth, there is no them and us in the fire department. There is only us. Now, you're going to go out into the field, and you're going to get into a fire station, and invariably there are going to be conversations that occur, and the conversations will center around us whatever part of the organization you are in, and them, whatever part of the organization is not at the kitchen table. Recognize that we are all wearing the exact same patch. Finally, you are, a member, you are always a member of the organization, always. Your actions speak word, louder than words ever can. Actos non verbos. It is actions, not words. Your actions will speak for themselves. Your actions will form your reputation, and that reputation will precede you everywhere you go, in every detail you take, in every incident that you respond to. On April 23, 1910, Theodore Roosevelt delivered a speech in France in the Sobourne. It has come to be known as the Man in the Arena speech. He said, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without erring and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat.
You will, in the course of your lives, encounter individuals who sit on the sidelines and criticize those who are in the arena. By virtue of wearing this uniform, you are in the arena. Never allow those cold and timid souls to garner one moment of your attention. Understand that you are now called upon to live a different life. You do not get to determine for yourselves what is the right code to live by. The public determines that. The public determines what is appropriate and inappropriate for us to do. The public determines whether or not we are comporting ourselves with their expectations. And that will be that way as long as you wear the uniform and even beyond into retirement. Because from this point forward, you will always be identified as a firefighter with Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue Services. Always. Remember prevention. I am a firefighter, and I cannot save your life. Last year, over 2,500 people died in single-family dwelling fires, and at every single one of those events, a firefighter was present. The reality is that the single most important thing that we can do as firefighters is prevent tragedy from happening, and for us, that means being active participants in smoke alarm programs, in teaching two ways out of every structure, in advocating for sprinklers. Maryland is unique on the national forefront leading the effort to save savable lives and it is important for me to remind everyone, a great mentor of mine said, there is no honor in fighting the fire that could have been prevented. Remember that the fire service owes you nothing, but if you dedicate yourself to it, it will give you everything. Although you may never achieve financial riches as a firefighter, the, rich, the richness you do achieve will be priceless, but that is an investment in yourselves. Do not ever wait for others to invest in you. Do not wait for someone to call your name. Call your own name. Invest in the most important thing you possibly can, yourselves. Chief Butler is leaving this organization. He is leaving it far better than he found it. And now he will pass the baton on to someone else who will continue to move the organization forward. One of you could be that person one day. Never set an artificial ceiling for yourself. My words for you include these. Proving yourself worthy of carrying the title of firefighter does not mean risking your life haphazardly or recklessly. The sign of a true professional is one who understands risk and reward and does the single most important thing that they can do at the end of the day, which is go home to your families who are here today sharing in this celebration. I ask you, as you go out into the field, to listen carefully, but form your own opinion. You see, sometimes it is better to let people believe you are a fool than to open your mouth and prove it to them. <laughs> Fundamentally, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are givers and takers. I ask that you be givers. Finally, there are four F's that I ask you to remember. Four F's. Faith, by whatever way you call that, family, friends, and the fire service. It is important to remember to keep them in that order. Faith, family, friends, and the fire service. God bless you. God bless your families. 
God bless this tremendous world-class fire department, and thank you for the honor of speaking tonight. Outstanding. Uh, Matt, I'm going to have to find out about emergency. Is that, is that streaming on Netflix? Or? Uh, I might be in that category. Sorry. So moving on to our Academy remarks, uh, I would like to now call to the stage to facilitate this portion of our ceremony, the Assistant Chief of Education and Training, Jose Sanchez. Wow, Matt. <laughs> Woo. Thank you very much, Chief Toby. Thank you very much. We truly honored to have you here and that you agreed to share your inspiring message with us and especially with the class. There were remarkable words that I and they will always abide by. Good evening, everyone. Come on now. Good evening, everyone. There you go. Come on, Class 30. Good evening. There you go, that's what I'm talking about. Let me begin by acknowledging that we would not be here today participating in this graduation ceremony without the hard work of our recruitment team, our human resources, and especially our fire chief, John Butler, and our county executive, Alan Kittleman, who have fostered resilience in these tough economic times making it possible to prepare for the spurts of economic times, uh, correction, for the spurts of growth in Howard County. They have provided our department the opportunity to deliver the service that our community deserves with the continuous hiring of this class and classes to come. On behalf of the Bureau of Education and Training and the department as a whole, you have our most profound thank you. Wow, it's finally here. I'd wager that on January 22nd, every single one of you thought this day was in the far distance and that it would never get here. Well, believe me, the Academy staff thought the same. <laughs> well, it did, and here you are in the company of your loved ones, friends, and new family, the fire service. I know that uh, they are as proud as the instructors and I are of you. But most importantly, you need to realize that you're the one that needs to be proud. The long hours, days, weeks, months that you successfully endured have paid off in the reason why you're here tonight. The waking up before sunrise in the cold and in the heat, or the marching cadence and discipline, the countless hours of physically and mentally challenging academic and practical training, the intensive physical fitness, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the leg lifts, the burpees, the long runs, and on and on and on. The in-your-face bad breath of your instructors <laughs> that, if they were gracious enough, kind of gave you a little bit of a shower every once in a while. The arriving home by dusk to spit shine your shoes and iron your uniforms as the books are propped up in front of you to prepare for the next day just to start all over again. Well, it's finally over. Or is it? Interesting facts. It was almost 34 years ago that Howard County had the first Academy class graduate in November of 1984, enduring the same exact things that you guys did. And here we are, graduating the 30th Academy class, repeating history 30 times over. As a matter of fact, July 1993, 25 years ago, almost to the day, Class 9 was graduating with the same number of students as you, 13. Remarkably, the same number. Is that something else? And you call yourselves the what? We, what do you call yourselves? Go ahead, I want to hear you. The proud 13? Now nah, we were the proud 13. <laughs> Among the students graduating in that class of 13 were firefighter recruits Butler, Jerome, Sanchez, and Welsh. 
sitting in those exact same seats. Those same recruits, well, maybe with a little bit more gray hair than what we they had that back then, are with you in the same room now as Fire Chief John Butler, Deputy Chief John Jerome, Assistant Chief Jose Sanchez, and Captain Douglas Welsh. I'm sure your instructors have inspired you in the same way that our instructors inspired us. I share this with you because it really isn't all over, folks. As soon as you march out of this center and into the stations next week, you need to continue to come to work each day with the same enthusiasm you have over the last 26 weeks. Don't lose the motivation that has been instilled in you and continue to face each, cha each challenge with the heart you had as a trainee. You will undoubtedly change. To quote a 1960s prominent human rights activist, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Make sure that change begins today and it's the one that continues to prepare you for tomorrow to perform the job that you imagined and applied for more than 10 months ago to the best of your ability. Listen to your heart, choose your battles, and take risks carefully. When things get challenging, reflect on your training. Initiate, imitate the professionalism you have witnessed in your instructors. Trust the experience and learn from the knowledge of those who will guide you throughout your career. An 1800s American writer once said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Explore, dream, and discover. I'm expanding on this ideology and telling you that dreaming of, these thi of the things you want to achieve will lead you to explore the opportunities and discover your potential. Dream big, and you too can be the fire chief, deputy chief, assistant chief, or captain 21 classes from now. Seems like a long way, but so was 26 weeks ago. Congratulations, graduates. Keep a great job and be safe. Best wishes to all of you. One of the long-standing traditions in academy classes is for the graduating class to leave a gift of significance for the following classes in the form of a class gift. Previous classes have joined together to provide gifts that can be witnessed along the administrative hallway of the training academy. Each class selects one lucky graduate to speak at their graduation ceremony and tell us about their experience and about the gift. Today's class has chosen trainee Kevin Rohr to be that person. Trainee Rohr, come on down. I wish they would have let me go first. <laughs> well, everybody, please, I know it's, I don't want to make it redundant, but please give the, the speakers that have already been up here a, an appreciative round of applause. They've done an awesome job. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for Training Class 30's graduation. Thank you, County Executive Honorable Alan Kittleman, Chief John Butler, along with senior staff. I'd like to take this time to thank the family members of each and every recruit here. As you watch your loved ones walk across stage to receive their badges tonight, know that they're paying homage to you. Through the sleepless nights, the My Brady tests, and the exam week anxiety, you kept us focused and encouraged us to stay strong. You never complained having had to listen to the one-liner questions that we had to deal with all the time and the never-ending shining of our boots. So at this time, will everyone please give our families a round of applause to which they deserve. As much of an honor as it is to give the speech on behalf of the class, I must admit it was challenging. It's hard to capture what training class 30 is with time restraints. So I decided to start off with a brief synopsis to set the tone. For classes 29 and 30's hiring process, roughly 1,500 applications were processed. Out of that 1,500, 55 offers were given, and 55 brave souls stepped forward to accept the challenge. 
Out of those 55, 48 made it to the finish line. And 26 weeks ago, 18 people from all different walks of life, levels of experience, and something to bring to the table came together to form Class 30. From the start, something was special about Class 30. No matter the differences between us nor the task at hand, we always got the job done. I gotta be honest, it, did, it wasn't always perfect and didn't always go through without just a little bit of tension. But no matter what happened that day, whenever we were released by the instructors to go back home, whenever we got into formation, we all were smiling again. And we were all laughing and joking. It was just another obstacle to overcome, and we did it as a team. And most importantly, we did it as a family. I don't think there's any better way of summing it up than the famous phrase coined by none other than Recruit Avery. There ain't no plan B, just class 30. Ain't that right, Avery? <laughs> it's a rite of passage for an academy class to erect a flag symbolizing its journey and what the class stands for. Our flag, sitting over there stage as you can see, has a statement which reads, Venomous, Venomous, Vicimus. This is a Latin phrase which translates to we came, we saw, and we conquered. Earlier on in the academy, the instructors were looking over our flag, and when the phrase was explained to them, one of the instructors turned to us and said something that I took person personally, and I believe set the tone for the class. He said, remember, you haven't conquered anything yet. <laughs> With the loss of some classmates, that statement's proven to be true. But as we stand here before you today, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm proud to say that we came, we saw, and we did conquer. <laughs> On behalf of the class, I would like to thank the academy staff and instructors. Howard County blessed this class with the most experienced, the most the most experienced, best training instructors in the country today. And I believe that wholeheartedly. The hard work and endless hours that they had to put in to, to take ordinary citizens and mold them into fearless firefighters and compassionate EMTs, and hopefully pretty soon a couple paramedics, <laughs> it did not go unnoticed. I'm sure they walked away many days scratching their heads wondering how in the heck are we going to be able to get this done. But ladies and gentlemen, they got it done with professionalism and tact. I believe that as a whole, they are confident that Training Class 30 is ready to step forward and move forward with steadfast courage and carry on the traditions in this life we live as firefighters. Every trainee here has earned their position that they're currently holding. But ladies and gentlemen, Training Class 30, the fight is not over. In fact, it's never over. Within the next year, we have a rookie book to complete, a six-month test, and then an end-of-year test that we have to successfully pass before we can even hold the titles firefighters. And after that, we have an entire career and legacy to leave behind. Training Class 30, we must always remember first that we are public servants to the wonderful citizens of Howard County. Never take our heads out of the books, never turn down training, and never stop trying to learn something new every single day. Every day we have to become better than we were the day before. And it's not just for us. It's for, the, it's for the families who wait and expect for us to come home at the end of a shift, and the families that we work with every third shift. Remember, some people work as firefighters, and some people are firefighters. Training class 30, we are firefighters. Carrying the torch for past generations of firefighters and keeping the passion and love for this career alive, training class 30 is here to answer that call. It is our duty to carry it for Howard County Department of Fire Rescue, while keeping old time traditions alive, yet being progressive and willing to leave the bravados at home and be willing to accept change as it comes because it's a better way of doing things and at the end of the day, it's safer for us. But I'm confident 
that training class 30 are going to be the ones who pushes forward and takes our vision statement and molds it into our, our mission statement. And then we will be the ones who sets the new boundaries and new barriers for, for the generations that come after us to triumph. I will end with this. Day one, we all came into this class not knowing our limits, not knowing how far we were willing to go, or even what we stood for. But we know now. And this is where the words that I'm about to say should hit your heart like the beat of a drum marching into battle, because this is where it gets serious. Whether it's citizens trapped in a snowmageddon, whether it's a roaring fire ripping through a home with victims still inside, whether it's a multiple car pileup with, with people in desperate need of help, we will be there. No matter how perilous the journey is, wherever there is a helpless hand reaching out in the dead of night, praying for a miracle, they are going to receive that miracle. And it will be in the form of a hand reaching back to them. And just above that hand, you will see a Howard County Department of Fire Rescue badge and a product of Class 30. Thank you. It's a, long, it's a long running custom for an academy class to present the instructors with a gift. And at this time, I'd like to call Trainee Nichols and Trainee Simpson forward to present that gift to all of you. <clears throat> and what we have is a wooden, handmade flag We have, a, yeah. it's a wooden handmade flag. Good. Are we gonna put it back? And now it's back to Chief Sanchez. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much, class, on behalf of the whole academy staff. Very, very nice. Did you guys make that yourselves? No. no. <laughs> I like it. Uh, the gift class 30 just presented symbolizes the academy experience of these graduates. It's a testament to the professionalism, dedication, and commitment of the instructors who have prepared these 13 graduates for the eye-opening experience they're about to encounter next week. When I call your names, please stand up and remain standing, and please let's hold our applause till the end. The person who tried to keep me in my office and made sure I stayed out of the weeds, Battalion Chief Sean Knotts. The leader of the academy that kept everything moving and everyone in check, Captain Douglas Welsh. The manager of All Hazards Branch and the Academy Administrator, Captain D'Angelo Red. The manager of Emergency Medical Services Branch, Captain Paramedic Tom Gerber. The manager for Professional Development, Captain John Merson. The supervisor for the Emergency Medical Services Branch, Lieutenant Paramedic Will Huber. The supervisors for the Professional Development Division, Lieutenants Josh Hommel and Lieutenant Paramedic Brandon Stillwell. The instructors for the Emergency Medical Services, Ma uh, Master Firefighter Paramedic Rich Manessis, Firefighter Paramedic Scott Paul, Firefighter Paramedic Cami Powell, and Paramedic Educator Don Weigel. The instructors for the All, Hazard, uh, All Hazards Division, there's too many for me to, to mention, so I'll just call one, Firefighter Ken Kugel. The instructor emeritus responsible for the structured bearing and discipline you have witnessed here today and left us for fire investigations, <laughs> Lieutenant Mark Plummer. For the last 26 weeks, these instructors right here have been the mentors, tutors, coaches, and models for these 13 graduates. They've come to know them better than they know themselves. Everything they did had a purpose. 
to find the strengths and the weaknesses of each and every single one of the graduates and push them to levels they never thought possible and to ensure they were going to be successful. So please join me in giving them an incredible round of applause. But the value of this instructional staff does not stand alone. It's further enhanced by our support staff, which is without question paramount in their success. The instructors and I have enormous respect and appreciation for this remarkable team. As I introduce you, please stand and remain standing. And please hold your applause till the end again. Our administrative assistant, who unfortunately was unable to be here today, Denise Weiss. Our volunteer coordinator, West Frenchie Volunteer Chief Mickey Day, our Multimedia Specialist, Retired Battalion Chief Gary Jones, our Learning Management System Specialist Suzanne Diz, our Records Management Technician Ms. Beverly Ditch. Please join me in recognizing their commitment for a job well done. Let me see, am I forgetting anybody? Oh, yeah those other ones. I would be seriously remiss if I suggested that we, didn't, or that we did it all on our own. Those that are closest to us are the ones that are responsible for truly all the success you see here today, whose faithful encouragement, advice, support, steadfast love, partnership, and dedication to this piece of our lives inspired us to build the solid foundation it took to get the job done. We are so grateful for your sacrifice, encouragement, and love. Thank you to all our spouses and significant others. Please join me in a round of applause. As is the case in every class, there's always a graduate that is deemed to be the highest academically ranked student. The department proudly introduces its valedictorian for the graduating class, trainee class 30. This outstanding and well-rounded graduate embodies an impressive breadth of knowledge, pride of personal character, and individual competency. This graduate has demonstrated a strong dedication to academics and responsibility to the department's rigorous requirements, all while remaining committed to a personal life and outside obligations. This graduate represents the talented and innovative class members we are so proudly graduating today. I wish this graduate the best of luck with everything in the future. Will Battalion Chief Utz, Captain Welsh, and Captain Red, please join me in the center of the floor. It's with great pleasure that I now announce the Class 30 valedictorian trainee Brooks Harrison. So we're about to move on to the certificates and the badging. And I want to explain to you that the badge we wear represents the people we protect and serve, our communities, the county, and ultimately every firefighter who has worn the badge before us. As firefighters, we're held to a higher standard than, our, than, uh, the, higher standard than are those we serve, not because we're better or because of what the badge represents. Honor, integrity, service, and dedication to the people that we were sworn to protect. The strength of character will be evidence when the class 30 graduates 
all bestowed the honor of wearing our, be our department badge, not as a piece of metal, but rather as an indication of our high standards of service as we work on getting the job done right. Need this? Yeah. All right, so thanks, Chief Sanchez. And as he alluded to, we will now begin the certificate badging and pinning portion of the ceremony. I'll make the announcement now that families one through four may make their way to the right staircase. Families one through four, you'll see Miss Bev. I think she's up there making her way down. Miss Bev, give a wave. Families one through four. Um, for this portion of the ceremony, of course, we do ask, other than families one through four, um, to stay in your seats, and all pictures should be taken from your seats. I ask that the ceremonial committee please take your place on the stage. Once again, during this transition, I'm going to remind everyone to please hold your applause until the end. And for the reading of the names, I call to the stage Battalion Chief of Education and Training, Sean Utz. Benjamin Avery the third. I realized how crazy and psychotic I possibly am for after we went there and I still want to be here. Almost like a dream come true. Uh, honestly, difficult and fun at the same time at the end of the day. We, we firefight already and that, that's the name of the game. Be fit, be ready to play anytime. You just got to stay focused, try to stay in the books, don't fall behind. Just keep it up, keep it pushing, keep it pushing. Just to find that smooth and that, that right finesse and technique, you can get into almost anything. Um, crew integrity and, and, and just trusting your crew, trusting your equipment, constantly practicing, getting your hands on to everything. We do it, and it makes sense to us and, and in our culture. We got to do what we got to do to get what we need to get done. He set you up for success. Just don't quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever quit. Daniel Bessick the third. To be here, I was happy today that I got to have some good bonding experience with my class. Bessick PT has been real tough, but the results are uh, finally paying off. I'm excited to see how much better I am at playing hockey this winter because of it. It's great reviewing the stuff that I haven't thought about since paramedic school. I really enjoyed my time in the Howard County operating room. It was a great experience. It's a once in a career educational opportunity, and I'm really glad that I got to have it. It was great to see the class go from uh, people who had no EMS experience to, at the end of eight weeks, being able to fully assess a patient and perform BLS skills. Uh, getting our teams reorganized, I would say that is a bad because now I get to uh, I have to relearn how to work with some new members, but that also is a good because I get to learn how to work with the class overall. Firefighter safety and survival is some of the best training I've ever taken. The latter bailouts and emergency escapes were a lot of fun. My only regret is I didn't take this class sooner. I'm glad that we passed our first uniform inspection with Chief Sanchez. <laughs> Joshua Fisher. Uh, not only did it 
bring our squads together, but it brought us together as a class. Evoc was a awesome course t for me. Uh, it was finally a dream come true to drive an ambulance, so. Uh, EMT has been awesome so far. Uh, a lot of information, very fast paced, but I think one of my favorite parts is definitely Scenario Friday. Gets you out there, real life situations, um, and, and allows you to be very interactive in your skills. You know, definitely getting in more shape than I thought I could have been in. I can't wait to see where I'll be in 26 weeks. Uh, Firefighter 1's been a crazy turn of events. Uh, definitely different than EMT, change of pace, everything. Definitely a lot quicker. Firefighter safety and survival's been a great time, great experience. Um, it's really important getting out there and doing the uh, Mayday training because you never know when it could have to save your life one day. You know, it's getting close to your squads is definitely the fun part of everything. Really paid off all this hard work in the end. And if the next family numbers five through nine can start making their way over to the right-hand side. Zachary Grant. Uh, my favorite thing about EVOC was definitely going out on the road and driving the ambulance. Scenario Friday, and that was very interesting to see it all from the patient's perspective and how everything works. Uh, this is my second go around taking EMT. I already had it coming into the academy, but I feel like I still learned a lot. The instructors were great, and I learned a lot of new information. Uh, PT has been going great so far since week one. I've cut a few minutes off my two-mile time and seen a lot of improvements. Uh, one of the things I really liked so far in Fire One was our stand-up sit-down burn, being able to see the difference in the thermal layering, and we actually got to do a little hose line advancement during that as well, which was pretty fun. It's been kind of hectic so far, but I feel like once I get used to it, everything will be all right. Uh, safety and survival has been a great class. I never imagined myself bailing out of second floor windows or crawling in the Merson house and falling from the second floor to the first. Uh, it's been a great class to learn about how to, how to save yourself and know what to do in case of emergency. Stephen Hamlet. Today was probably the hardest I worked in my entire life. Uh, the PT program has been great. I've seen a huge difference in push-ups, sit-ups, and especially running. So I feel a lot better. Heart rate's dropped, blood pressure's dropped, everything. So the PT program is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, it's a lot of information in a very short amount of time put some of the things that we've been learning in the practice and see how they really work out in the field. Firefighter One has not disappointed. It's been extremely fun. Climbing through the maze, climbing up the aerial. So that really helped us to get very good at what we did in a short, short, short period of time. And so uh, obviously it all worked because we all passed our tests. So uh, the instructors did a really good job with what they're doing in the worst case scenario. And on top of that, it taught us how to prevent the worst case scenario. So just to prove to ourselves that if we got in trouble, we could save ourselves or save our fellow firefighters, that was a really positive thing. So. Brooks Harrison. Um, I think it was a great team building activity. We really got to bond. Scenario Friday, this has been the best thing yet. Yeah, it's nice to get out there and not only be trying to remember everything that I learned before, but just put it to use. But um, it's been fun so far. I'm having a great time with PT. Captain Gerber does a great job of switching it up all the time, getting in there every day, breaking a sweat. Uh, we just had our second assessment and uh, my waist is getting smaller, my chest is getting bigger, so that's got to be a good thing. Uh, I can't give enough props to the instructors. They gave us everything that we needed um, to be successful, and 
and we took advantage of it. You know, I had a good time helping other people and putting the hours in. So I look forward to the rest of the academy. This is what I came here for. You know, I love it, getting out there, doing stuff. Uh, everything from you know the time we get here in the morning till the time we leave, I have a good time. So just that high risk, low frequency. You, know, you never know when the Red Devils are going to reach out and grab you. So always got to stay ready. You know, train as many ways as possible. But it's a great time. I love it. Thomas Nichols the fifth. There's been a lot to learn, a lot to retain. Um, overall, I can see progress in everybody, and it's it's pretty interesting that you know this is an accelerated program, and we're getting it pretty quick. So I'm really impressed with everybody in the class, and um, I'm I'm excited to see what comes. He's going along well right now. Uh, you can definitely see improvement in the class, and that's that's fantastic. Uh, you can see a lot of improvement. Um, people are you know really starting to step it up. It's, uh, it's very interesting to see what the guys really do out there. and It was really nice doing the ride-alongs and the scenarios and stuff like that. You really get a feel for what you got to do. And I'm, I'm really excited to get out in the field and really excited to put all this good knowledge to use. Uh, so far, Firefighter Survival has been a really good time. You can tell everybody's having a lot of fun, especially when it came to bailouts and stuff. You know, we're doing stuff that you, know, you never really thought you'd even do. And you hope to never use it, but you know, now that we know it, now that we're really starting to get good at it and try and perfect our, our skill, it's, it's getting a lot of fun. You can tell it's a, it's a challenge and you know, everybody loves the challenge, so it's, it's definitely a lot of fun. Kevin Rohrer. First couple of weeks at the EMT has been uh, very interesting. It's and uh, everything's starting to make sense uh, now that now that we're actually getting out and getting hands on and, and assessing patients and stuff like that. So it's been fun. I'm coming on you know twice as strong as I was before, running twice as fast. So. Pretty exciting. It was very very difficult um, at first. It was hard to grasp everything, but Towards the end, everything started coming together, and the more we did practicals, the more we put hands on, it was, it was much easier, and I think we all did a good job. So, you know, everybody's tired every day at the end of the day. Uh, one of the hardest things that I definitely underestimated was pulling, pulling charge hose line. That was definitely hard, but uh, it's, been, it's been really awesome, and I can't wait to get out of here and start this career. It's been rough. We got some bruises, some scrapes, but I think it's the most vital portion of this, this training, how to get me and my brothers out you know, when, when things get bad. Can the next family group numbers 10 through 13 please make their way down the side aisle? Ashley Savage. I really was impressed today by the amount of teamwork, especially the support that I got from my team to help me through things. A few weeks has been pretty intense. It's a lot of reading, a lot of work to keep up on, um, and there's a lot of new 
information, a lot of acronyms to remember and applying them, a lot of new assessment skills uh, that we're kind of building on day to day. So, you know, Firefighter One has been, you know, like jumping in the deep end of the cold pool. I didn't really know a lot about it, um, except what I've, you know, what I've heard and observed. And so it's, it's definitely been overwhelming and it is for sure harder for me than EMT. But now I feel what some of those people were feeling when all that EMT stuff got dumped on them. So I go out and do these things. I surprise myself. And every time I do it, you know, again and again, you just get better at it the more you practice it. So I think every day has been a challenge, but every day I'm pushing myself further and keep getting better at stuff. So, you know, this has been a great adventure for me. Justin Simpson. We had uh, some great times today. We learned a lot. Uh, we learned a lot about of our uh, co-workers and a lot about our uh, leaders here in our classroom. And uh, we're going to keep moving forward and keep doing better. Um, we went ahead and uh, went to shock trauma, which was really neat. And we got to see uh, CISCOM, where all the state police helicopters are monitored. Just huge gains from everybody. Um, I'm losing weight, losing inches off of everywhere, and uh, noticing I'm getting stronger every day. Uh, I'm also starting to enjoy the running. We're doing some longer runs now, and uh, our long runs and cadence have uh, turned to be very enjoyable. Um, we helped them with their scenarios. We helped them with their studies. They all did phenomenal and worked hard through it. Um, I think the class was very accelerated and very fast, and they all managed to buckle down and, and get it done. And uh, we managed to get through it successfully. So, um, we just finished Firefighter Rescue and Survival. It was a great class. We learned a lot. Um, definitely got a whole bunch of bumps and bruises along the way, but I think it's the best class and funnest class we've taken so far. Wally Ukta. Uh, these past couple of months have been very enlightening. At times, a bit overwhelming because there's a lot of new information for me. However, it's a lot of good information. I'm learning quite a lot, um, a lot more than I thought I would. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, putting this to good use. Academy PT has been exhilarating. It's been fun, it's been challenging. But it's always fantastic in order to see the numbers at the end of the day, see your improvement. An experience, to say the absolute least. Um, I've been exposed to things that I've, honestly, if you told me three years ago that I would be experiencing, I probably wouldn't have believed you. Um, it's been fantastic. It's been intimidating. It's been, to the point, even scary at times. But uh, with the training staff here and the instructors being as knowledgeable as they are, it's... Um, it's been, a, it's been an easier learning curve to deal with.
Zachary Van Adder. Hey, it was great team building uh, work. Uh, it's probably the hardest I've worked in a very long time. Uh, it's a lot of information in such a short amount of time, but uh, it was really great. The instructors did a, uh, a good job on uh, painting the picture. Hat. He's been really great. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to get out of the classroom, get a good workout. I'm really happy on my progress so far in regards to being fle more flexible and stuff like that. Uh, can't wait to see how far it goes from. Uh, a little academically challenging. Um, it's very fast-paced environment. And um, I like getting into the physical stuff and getting into uh, a lot of the teamwork and working in a squad and building that camaraderie like the firehouse would have. And uh, it's been great. Fun, a lot of grueling work, but definitely knowing how to uh, save our own is definitely key. So it's been great. Joshua Wood. Had a lot of fun the past few weeks doing uh, EMT. Uh, this is the first time I've ever taken an EMT course. Uh, it's a lot of information, uh, but the instructors are doing a great job in teaching it. And um, going out in the field is a lot of fun, getting to apply what we've learned. And he's going good. Um, each day getting stronger and stronger. Uh, can't wait to see more improvement. Very fun, yet challenging at the same time. Uh, a whole lot of material in a very short amount of time, uh, but we had an amazing uh, set of instructors to teach us all the information we needed to know, and uh, came out successful. So, so far, an amazing experience. Um, we did the stand-up sit-down the other day, and uh, it's the first time ever being in a house that's uh, had fire in it. It was a really cool experience. Um, really great opportunity to come out here and. Uh, get some good training in on some uh, low frequency, high risk uh, scenarios. I'm um, just glad to be here. I would now like to call to the stage Howard County's Clerk of the Court, Wayne Roby, for the official oath.
of the Howard County, of the Howard County, Howard County Department, Department of Fire and Rescue Services. Department of Fire and Rescue Services. And that I will, and that I will, to the best of my skill and ability, to the best of my skill and ability, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the duties, execute the duties of a Howard County. Of a Howard County Department of Fire and Rescue, Department of Fire and Rescue, Emergency Responder, Emergency Responder, according to the Constitution, according to the Constitution and laws of this state, and laws of this state. And with that said, from this moment on, they will be known as Recruit Class 30, no longer trainee class. The county executive allows you to smile. <laughs> thank you, thank you. No worries. And that's an order. We're now going to move on to the Class 30 video. This is something that we do for every graduating class, and this video will show families and friends some of the scenes of what, was, of the, what the class endured over the six-month academy. I want to make sure that everyone knows, too, that the video that you saw before and the video that you'll watch now will be made available for everyone after the ceremony. We know you'll enjoy it. Hello, my name's Trainee Benjamin Avery. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks to my fiance. Uh, she has been there the complete six months through the academy and with cooking and cleaning and uh, assisting with Perfect. ironing clothes and things like that. Um, if it wasn't for her, uh, this would have been a long, long road. Um, the last six months have been outstanding, um, more than, than words can explain. Uh, I also would like to give a special thanks to uh, our EMT structural staff, um, Dr. Manessis and uh, Instructor Powell. She answered every Bush question I could throw at her. <laughs> um, there it is. Yeah. Good job. Trainee Dan Basick, I'd like to thank my family and friends, especially my roommates Nick and May. You two helped me through a lot of tough nights during the academy, especially during the first week. I'd also like to thank Captain Gerber and Instructor Weigel for my paramedic education and Instructor Paul for helping me to become a better firefighter and teaching me how much a canary weighs. This academy has been one of the most challenging events in my life and I am glad to have seen all 130 days to the end. We will be through. I'll be glad so will you. Trainee Joshua Fisher, 
Um, the last six months have been a crazy, unforgettable experience. Uh, being a part of Howard County and Fire and Rescue has been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. And to sit here and say that I'm finally a Howard County firefighter, there's just no words to describe it. it it's a dream come true. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Academy staff for all their hard work and dedication, making us the best that we can be. Thanks to my parents and my brothers for being there every step of the way and all your love and support this whole time. To the rest of my family and friends, thank you also for all of your support and all of your kind words that you've given me through the process. To the Squirrel Squad, shout out to you guys. You guys are friends for life. And to the rest of TC30, here's to the rest of uh, our career with you guys. It's been a blast these last six months and can't wait to see where the rest of the road takes us. Trainee Zachary Grant. These past six months have just been a dream come true. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to be a firefighter, growing up, growing up around the fire department with my father. But I couldn't have gotten through these past six months without a bunch of people helping me. First off, I'd just like to thank our instructors for everything they've done. They've been helpful all throughout the way, just making sure we always knew what we were doing and keeping us in check. I also want to thank my parents, especially my mom. Ever since I got home from work, she would always be there to help me with whatever, with whatever I needed. And I'd also like to thank my dad. I still have the note he gave me on the first day of class that he slipped into my book bag, uh, something that means a lot to me. And the last person I'd really like to thank is my girlfriend, Krista. Uh, she's been so motivational towards me throughout this whole process and couldn't have done it without her and her helping me study and making sure I knew my vision and mission statement towards the beginning of the academy. But I couldn't, I couldn't have done it without all these people and thank them for everything they've done. Trainee Stephen Hamlin. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my wife for always being supportive, especially in the beginning when I was getting adjusted to this very hectic, very demanding schedule, helping me to iron and have lunch ready. So I really like to thank her. I appreciate everything she did. And I also like to thank my parents for always being encouraging, helping me to see even when it was very difficult that I could make it through. Um, I certainly like to thank all my brothers, um, especially those who have been through this before, who know what the experience is like. They really helped me to prepare myself to know what to expect out of this experience and really get the most out of it. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the entire training staff, uh, the chiefs, the captains, lieutenants, all of the instructors who took time out of their busy schedules to come help us because uh, they really helped us to learn as much as we possibly could in this very short period of time so that we could be the best firefighters we could when we get out into the field. Um, Trainee Brooks Harrison, I'd like to start out by thanking Chief Butler for giving me this opportunity. It's been a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, it seems like not too long ago, I, had, uh, I was a little kid and had all my toy fire trucks set up in a storage box with the engine bays and our father would dispatch a fire in the fireplace and I'd have them all respond there. Uh, it's been you know, a long time coming, but uh, I'd like to thank the instructors. They've done a great job of uh, making sure that we're successful through the academy. Uh, big shout out to the Nichols family for taking me in as their adopted son. It's gonna take a lot of crabs to repay them. Uh, uh, shout out to the Squirrel Squad. I made a lot of friends in the academy. Um, a lot of lifelong friends, but, um, and I'd like to thank my family, of course. Uh, my mother, father, two brothers, my sister, my fiance's parents. Uh, they are my support system, and I love going home telling them stories. And uh, my 92-year-old grandmother, of course, I wanna thank her. She always sends me uh, the joke of the day, and she knows how to make me, you know, smile at the end of the day. But uh, most of all, I want to thank my fiance Emma. Uh, I look forward to hearing her voice at the end of the day and telling her what went on, hearing about her day. And probably don't say this enough, but I love you, and uh, you know, I can't thank you enough. But I had a lot of fun at this academy, and really, I'm happy that it's over. I'm looking forward to turning this page and starting a new chapter.
I'm trainee Thomas Nichols. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking Howard County and Chief Butler for giving me this opportunity of a lifetime. I'd also like to thank, or thank all the instructors and all the staff that put in countless extra hours with helping everybody and getting us through this very challenging time. I'd also like to thank all my classmates for always having my back. I also want to give a little shout out to the Squirrel Squad. Hopefully we stick together through all these years. Um, I'd like to thank my family for always supporting me. Uh, they were always there for me no matter what, you know, help me make lunches, do laundry here and there. I'd like to thank my girlfriend for doing a lot of my laundry. I really appreciate that. You know, I love you guys for that. Um, you know, th this time in the academy I'll have with me for the rest of my life. And uh, I'll, I'll definitely never forget it. And I'm glad that I made some new lifelong friends along the way. Trainee Kevin Rohr, um, I could spend all day trying to, to thank everybody who's meant something to me, and, um, but the closest people to me are the ones who've, who've helped me the most. Um, I'd first like to thank the most important person in my life is uh, my wife. Um, I've, we've been going through a, a couple years of, of me moving around, changing, being gone a lot, and um, she's, she stayed strong and, and showed me love that I can never find anywhere else and I couldn't have done this or anything else without her. And um, I would like to thank the people who came before me as far as you know, my grandfather who retired from here. Um, those are really big shoes to fill and um, he's, you know, he's kept me going straight forward, uh, kept me on pace and uh, everybody else who came before me. And I'd also like to thank all my classmates um, you know, everybody's had that day where their head was down or, you know, a testing goes as good as they thought. And there's always just somebody coming around saying, hey, keep your head up, keep moving. And um, I don't think we all could have done it without each other. Command, okay, got a fix bring them out the outside window. Command, engine two, I got you on the seat. Get a backup lot, pull this stretch to the outside. So. Hi, I'm trainee Ashley Savage. Um, I'd like to thank my family for my success uh, getting through the academy. Without them, I never could have done it. My mom and um, my dad and stepmom and my in-laws babysat and helped out and kept the kids without question. Um, they took them whenever they could, whenever they were off work themselves. My babysitter came as early as 4.30 in the morning and came back after, after in the afternoon to get my kids off the bus in addition to her full-time job. My husband, who also works full-time here for the county, took over everything at home, uh, helped polish boots, helped be the you know, emotional support that I needed so I could study. Um, my kids were patient and crossing off the calendars every day, uh, you know, just waiting for mom to get through. And the staff here um, really kind of pushed me when I needed pushing to get through. Uh, saw when I didn't have the confidence because this was new to me and felt a little isolated being the only female and kind of helped give me the hard push when I needed it and the gentle push when I needed that and I just really think that without all the support and um, I never would have gotten through and really my my husband at home was kind of this the backbone of me getting through this but really my entire family on the whole I never ever could have done it without them so thank you. Uh, trainee Justin Simpson, um, I wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity here. I wanted to thank Howard County for the opportunity uh, to become a firefighter here in Howard County. Um, I had a great time here with all the training. 
Um, specifically the ALS instructors. The ALS instructors were great and expanded my knowledge. Um, we had a great time doing all the fire portion of it, the rescue portion of it. I love the rescue portion of it. Um, all the instructors for fire, all the instructors for rescue, all the special operations stuff. It was great. We had a great time doing it. Um, I want to thank my family. Um, none of this could have been possible without them and I would love to thank my wife. Um, she stayed at home with the kids. She worked a full-time job. She helped us move in the middle of everything. Um, all in all, it's just been a long, rough road, but at the end, it's all worth it. We've had a great time doing it. Um, definitely experiences that are going to stick with us for the rest of, of my life and my fellow trainees for the rest of their lives. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity. Okay. You count since you're on the line. My name is Trainee Wally Okta. Uh, I want to thank my family for their love and support. Uh, they have been a tremendous emotional support system throughout this entire process. Uh, they have helped me when I needed help. They have lifted me up when I needed to be lifted up. And they have dusted me off when I, when I needed to be picked up. Um, I especially want to thank my mother and my father for everything that they have done throughout this entire process, uh, whether it be an uh, ear um, or shoulder to lean on, what have you. Uh, they have been the biggest support system that I could have ever asked for throughout this process. I also want to thank my niece, uh, Michaela, for uh, giving me <laughs> a lot of encouragement throughout this entire process. Every time, I, every time I saw her, she would always run up to me saying, he's a firefighter, he's a firefighter. And that would give me um, an additional boost of energy that I needed in order to continue on. Uh, I also want to thank my friends uh, who gave me um, a place in order to decompress. Uh, they gave me uh, time away from everything that was going on so that I could uh, bring myself back to normal and so that I can go back out and do this all over again. Um, I want to thank them for everything that they've done and everything that they've uh, dealt with in the process of doing this. Um, and last but not least, I also want to thank the instructional staff. Trainee Zach Van Adder from Winslow Township, New Jersey. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, all the family and friends at home that supported me while I was down here for six months conducting my training. Um, especially my wife, who had to play both roles essentially for a while. Secondly, I'd like to thank Howard County for the opportunity. I'm very pleased to be here and hope to be here a long time. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the instructional staff for all the time and dedication they put into us so we were all successful. Trainee Josh Wood, I'd like to start off by thanking Howard County for giving me the opportunity to uh, come out here and uh, learn at the Academy. Um, I'd also like to thank my family and friends for sticking by my side and always giving me some help whenever I needed it. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, Academy staff and instructors for giving their time as well and uh, just helping everybody out as much as they can, helping us learn. Also like to thank my uh, Academy class as well um, for sticking by our sides as well and uh, helping everybody out as much as they can.
I'm a steamroller, baby. I'm a steamroller, baby. And I'm rolling down the line. And I'm rolling down the line. So you better get out of my way now. So you better get out of my way now. Or I roll right over you. Or I roll right over you. With a little, hey! a little, hey! a little rock and roll. It's the kind of, hey! the kind of, hey! the kind of soothes your soul. I'm a firefighter, baby. I'm a firefighter, baby. And I'm fighting all the time. And I'm fighting all the time. I'm a firefighter, baby. I'm a firefighter, baby. Put my life on the line. Put my life on the line. So you better get out of my way now. So you better get out of my way now. Or I roll right over you. Or I roll right over you. With a little, hey! a little, hey! a little rock and roll. It's the kind of, hey! the kind of, hey! the kind of soothes your soul. I'm a firefighter, baby. I'm a firefighter, baby. And I'm fighting all the time. And I'm fighting all the time. Folks, let's give one more round of applause also for Mr. Gary Jones who put that video together. We're now going to do the change of command portion of the ceremony and I would like to call to the stage Deputy Chief William Anoszewski. Good evening, everyone. Recruit Class 30, congratulations. Ton you, Tonight, you have reached about the 10th rung on the most ridiculous extension ladder you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and that ladder is called the learning ladder. Tonight, you've reached the 10th. Tomorrow's a new day. Never stop reaching for a new rung. So let's get on with the change of command. Today, the primary purpose of the change of command is to allow subordinates to witness the formal transfer of total command from one officer to another. These ceremonies provide the experience of command change to academy graduations while preserving tradition and stimulating esprit de corps. As the time minor tradition continues, I call Assistant Chief Jose Sanchez from Education and Training and Acting Assistant Chief James Brothers from Emergency Services, front and center. Today, Assistant Chief Jose Sanchez, Bureau Chief of Education and Training, to whom the trainee class has been assigned for the last six months, will relinquish command to the now graduated recruits to Acting Assistant Chief James Brothers, Acting Bureau Chief of Emergency Services, where the majority will be assigned for the remainder of their career. Present, huh? Order, huh? I'll ask that the rest of the audience please rise as I call Chaplain Stone back to the podium for the benediction of our ceremony. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, as we conclude this celebration and go about our lives and duties, we ask that you go with us. Bless these, the members of Recruit Class 30, as they enter this greatest profession of service to others. As they go forward, we earnestly pray that they do so, always keeping their faith before them. Bless them to serve a life of honor in your name and in memory of their brothers and sisters who have gone before them. Bless our families and reassure them that while we are away, that we are one another's keeper. 
This duty alone is our deepest obligation, and we will honor it. Father, keep all the members of this department and those of the worldwide Fire and Rescue Service continually in your care. Give them the strength and fortitude to faithfully serve all in need. Now please join me in a moment of silence, remembering firefighters Robert W. Clary and firefighter Raymond P. Mills of the Lisbon Volunteer Fire Company. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Well, this concludes the graduation ceremony. We ask that you please stay at your seats for the dismissal of Recruit Class 30. And for those of you looking for photo opportunities, once again, I'll remind you of the designated photo area in the lobby. Thank you all for coming this evening. Have a great night, a wonderful weekend, and stay safe.